week with my old landlord and i was like this is really weird oh I back in the the post house building yeah yeah it's cool yeah because i'm not i mean i've been in hanover for the past three years and we're gonna move end of this oh, year so too. it was at least three years ago because when i you were still in that office <laughs> yeah they had like black mold issues or something mm-hmm. yeah yeah which i've finally like over for the most part but it, like it fucked me up pretty bad so. yeah yeah um so listeners uh that voice you hear that was kind of sort of a sound check <laughs> no I, I, I literally it's only been recording like 20 seconds right. um i didn't get you saying anything bad damn it um <laughs> it's matt mulligan of hawk visuals uh he, we were just talking he was on like three four years ago something like that something like that yeah i feel like at the time you were just recording fat shirtless restaurant owners arm wrestling <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> i think that's like when we yeah met. And that was that was a fat Jordan day too, wasn't that? When that, was, was, that was like, yeah. You know, I can say this now because he's like fucking super skinny. Oh yeah, but that was, uh, that was like him at his fattest. <laughs> and because um, he looks great now, he, he great, does Jordan. look great. Jordan looked great. He um, looked great. But yeah, that's how we met. And I'm like, yeah. who is this guy? And they're like, oh, he's great. You should talk to him. Yeah. And uh, we talked about like how you got started. It just like, I think it was your grandfather gave you a drone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was in college and yeah, gave me a drone. Figured I could make some money with it, and and now you're like shooting documentaries, <laughs> shooting and, like, documentaries, hanging out with the Boston Bruins, and like yeah, well, yeah. Gibbs, like how the hell did you get that? I know, like, yeah, it's definitely it's a crazy process. I talk to my wife all the time about it because uh, same thing. It's like I was at my old office. I was telling you off yeah. off air uh, last week in Plymouth, and I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of a blast from the past we're in Hanover now and bigger office more employees and uh I'm like how the hell did I even get here because honestly for me like it doesn't feel like this is a job right, right. now yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. still in that weird like it's been five years I quit being an architect and I moved and whatever whatever and yeah, uh I got hitched I got a house and so like life is just kind of like happening and it's all good but i still don't like fully see how i got where i am right now i i I feel that so much and do you ever have those moments where you're like you're doing your thing having fun all of a sudden you're like oh oh yeah i'm at work yeah all (laughs) all the time all the time yeah Yeah. my friends hate me because i'm you know i you know i'm on nantucket one day or filling with the bruins and like oh that's cool like what are you doing i'm like oh I'm, i'm working they're like oh Okay, and they're in their office job, like doing their thing. But yeah. like, it, it doesn't feel like work. And even like with you, we were talking, I guess, off air too. Like, even with you guys, I mean, it seems like you're blowing up too. So like, for you, does, like does it gonna, feel, like... feel like this is going to be a crazy, crazy year? And it's it's such this weird. I, I want to say I'm used to it, but I'm not. Yeah. Where you're basically people like pitch you an idea, or you have an idea. And you're like, all right, let's do this. And you kind of make that commitment. And then you immediately like, did I just shoot myself in the foot? <laughs> like, did I just over... Is that how it feels right now for you? Or are you always, still... It always, always feels Always does, yeah. 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 I mean, and it's, it, it's this weird, like... I feel like you do that. And you get this, like, oh, shit. Yeah. Did I just make a mistake? Right. And it, you know, you work your ass off, whatever. And you're like, okay, I didn't die. Everything worked, okay. Yeah. And then you do it again, and you still kind of have that feeling. And eventually, after like doing it for a while, like you just kind of forget that you ever had that mm-hmm. feeling, and it just becomes normal. Yeah, you know, like yeah, you know, mug paintings for us. Like I remember at one point, it was like, oh, it's a bit of a financial, you know, commitment to like buy all this material and blah blah. blah. And I mean, that's a, a a sign of growth that I see all the time. It's like when we started Nebri Art, it'd be like, do I want to spend a hundred bucks? And yeah. now you're just like, yeah, whatever. It's just part of the... Yeah, like, it's just another $100. Yeah. Send it out the door. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's kind of a nice feeling, being like, hey, I have a budget now, mm-hmm. you know, opposed to being like, I guess I can dump that money. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like there's always going to be, even, like, with me, um, that whole kind of like, oh, shit, what did I get myself into still happens now. Because yeah. it's, you know, the the even with you, like, the bigger you get, the more you grow, the more you do, you're like, okay, this is real. And, like, am I going to mess this up? And not that that, like, detracts you from doing anything, but, like, it's still, as you continue to grow, it's, like, you keep gaining more and more confidence, and so that happens less. But it happens to me all the time still. Yeah. Like, with a documentary, I'm, like, I have never filmed an hour-and-a-half documentary ever. I mean, so I'm like, am I going to... like, when I first talked to you, you're, like, yeah, I just got this drone, and 
watch some YouTube videos yeah. on like how yeah. to shoot photos, and then you're like, oh, I have a documentary. I'm like, wow, was yeah. that like yeah. that's crazy? But I'm not. I guess I'm not. I'm someone that I'm not super afraid of doing the challenging type of stuff because I know, like, even I'm I'm fortunate now that I have a pretty good team around yeah. me, right? So. If if I'm not super confident in a project, I'll take it on knowing that my team can take mm-hmm. it on too. And like we'll learn and we'll grow as we go. And their next documentary will be yeah. you know even better than the first one. Um, but I mean, it's like it's I'm sure it's like with you too, like with the mugs and that. Oh, you know, it's like a hundred bucks. That's a lot. Like, do I want to do it? And you say, okay, I'll do it. And then now the next time, it's like, okay, I know it's good. Like, right, right, we're yeah. gonna continue growing, and growing. So it's just kind of like. And now you're like, I just ordered like five hundred dollars in mugs and I blink an eye. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, well, whatever. They're not gonna go bad. Oh yeah, yeah. No, exactly, exactly. So it's just it's one of those things that, as I get more confident and do more of these projects it's like okay it's second nature to do a documentary it's second nature to film do you, a drone video do you think there's something wrong with us where we don't have <laughs> that with you definitely <laughs> me yes <laughs> I, think like, I, feel, for sure. I feel like quote unquote normal people <laughs> have something like suggested or like something they want to do and they're like I don't have the skill set to do that perfectly or the correct way yeah but i feel like you and i are like i don't have the skill set i'll learn it on the fly yeah and like that could be a good and a bad thing yeah right i think i lean more towards it being a good thing but um and maybe it's you know you're a creative and i am a creative now and i was an architect so yeah. maybe that's like the whole mindset that we have where it's like we'll just find a way of making it work and if I'm not going to know how to do it now, then I will at some point throughout the process. Right. Like, maybe the first time you do an event, like, I don't know about your experience, but, like, I'm, I'm sure that first, whether it's mug painting or whatever, like, I'm sure that I'll go first back event... go listen to, the, like, the first couple podcasts. Well, it was probably awful. They're terrible. Terrible. No, I know. <laughs> I'm sh- And if, if I look at my work from four years ago, it yeah. was terrible compared to now. So, you know, it's like... Should I have taken that, even though it's like a mediocre project? It's like, yeah, I think I still would have done it. Not that it was mediocre, but if I look back at it now, I'm like, oh, I could have done way better. And I'm sure you, right. it's like, I could have had that event but way it, but better. It's like but like you need that, you need that mediocre thing so you can go, oh, I did a mediocre job. This is how I do a better job. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, my, one of my favorites is when we started this, we bought like a $60 microphone omnidirectional so just plop it on the table it's supposed to get everything yeah yeah and we were recording a couple and we couldn't figure out like why we couldn't get good sound it sounded like me and the guest were like 40 feet away and <laughs> yeah. fish would clear his voice and would come through crystal clear and we're like goddamn microphone blah blah, blah. right so then we upgraded to uh, a blue yeti oh, much yeah. ni- much nicer yeah, yeah yeah um and then one day, like, me and Fish were talking about it, and he's like, yeah, uh, I think I had the input set wrong, which now mm-hmm. I'm looking to make sure. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> speaking of that. Yeah, speaking of that. <laughs> um, no. And he had it set to his laptop mic, so we were uh, 40 feet away. Okay. And so the, we just had a microphone that was inactive on the table. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's why it sounds terrible. And, yeah. And um, I don't know if you know, we started, like, some YouTube footage like a youtube no show way. yeah and uh for the podcast for bar talk yeah okay and uh it's called day drinking that's a great name yep <laughs> and uh great premise so we take three pairs of people and they try four cocktails and the idea is you come on and talk about the cocktail and 90 percent of what you say about the cocktail doesn't make the show it's all the dumb banter in no between. that sounds amazing well you get progressively drunk and jordan when he drank was mm-hmm. on it um, but it's Carl and, you know, all the Plymouth, all the Plymouth guys, Plymouth yeah. regulars. Yeah. And, um, the first one's really bad. Like, <laughs> so like almost to the point I want to take it down, but I like that. Like, I want people, if they're even thinking about doing something like that, if they can see someone else grow just in, I think we have like nine episodes, just nine episodes go from like, that's terrible. Like we've. You're talking about like the the quality or oh, just the focus. overall? Oh, yeah. uh, we ran out of booze. We oh, God. the battery died, so there's like a big gap for no reason. Like oh, my anything, God. like we had no idea what yeah, we were doing. Everything went wrong. Yeah, yeah. And then like to grow and 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 improve, and then like by the time we get to like 
the 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 rum episode and the Vegas episode and the this past Christmas one. It's like nine hundred times better. Yeah, you know we get yeah. a little better because you you spend a hundred bucks on a lighting rig because you're like why not? Yeah, and then you're like okay we want to change this about it and then you get a little upgrade it and and that's yep. you, you buy. Uh, do you know who Adam Savage is? Uh, I don't. He's no. from uh, MythBusters. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah okay, yeah. If, and yeah. Uh, he, I think he says like you buy the the if you're if you think you're going to use something you buy like the least expensive one, and then if you realize it's something you're going to use, then you go out and buy the best one you can afford. That's exactly how I did it. Yeah, yeah. I had a three hundred dollar camera that I used for two years, yeah. and it was okay. But like, yeah, even like Adam Savage or whoever else, like I've a lot of creators that I follow too, are like it really. At least when you're starting, it doesn't really matter what you're shooting it on. It's what you're shooting and how you're shooting it. So, mm-hmm. like, for me, I practice more about getting the lighting right, the natural lighting, getting the angles right, getting the editing right, and I just use a regular camera. I mean, there's people that can shoot amazing videos on an iPhone. Yeah. Right? I mean, I know iPhones have, like, amazing cameras now, but it's like like you just said. It's until you really want to take that next step of, like, okay, I really want to take this to a professional level and whatever then you make that upgrade but yeah. you've had all those years before that of practicing on a camera that is okay but now it's easy to transition to a better camera because you've already got all your angles down how to use cameras and that kind of thing um even with me like i just bought a five thousand dollar drone which is a lot of money for a drone but like yeah. i've had my drone for five years and it was way out of date but i was just good at using it right yeah so, so it's like, like oh, i got stubborn yeah. with it and now it's like okay we're doing a little bit more <sighs> higher end stuff that needs that output so mm-hmm. we'll buy a drone that'll fit for that but like that it took me five years to even buy a new drone yeah <laughs> so because there is that like learning curve like we we have the the uh the camera that we use for for video and and whatnot. What do you guys shoot on? Uh, Canon M50. Okay, yeah. And um, we bought a new one. Please don't ask me what it is because I don't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Because it it kind of just fell into our lap. Like uh, a friend decided they wanted to shoot video, um, and do like turn them into like classes or something. And they went out and invested uh-huh. all this money and did like two or three, and then just got discouraged. Yeah. And uh, so we got a, a really good deal, like tripod and, you know, a new camera and lens and blah, blah, blah. Interesting. And um, it's just like, it, it's just, I don't have time to learn all the new, like, giz- like it's Bluetooth enabled. I'm like, I don't even know what that does. Yeah, I'm like, right, that's cool, right, but what do right, I hook it up to? Right. The printer, my speaker, I don't know. <clears throat> But even like I think for you guys too, though it's a lot of it. Yeah, yes, you want to make it look and sound good, and a podcast should sound good. But yeah. it also should be just the overall content too. For sure. So there's a huge thing because I and I get all the time with our with our clients. It's like, you know, they want to film their own videos on their phone, which is fine. Like we yeah. encourage that, but they're so focused on making everything look perfect that then the content they're posting is garbage because they don't really think about their scripting that right. they want to do. It looks pretty good and sounds pretty good but the content's garbage Mm -hmm. so yeah there's a real even kind of like push in content creating in general where they don't want it to look too produced you know well that's basically all of tiktok yeah i mean tiktok is like just stream of consciousness on your phone it drives me crazy and i don't understand why people do this and i understand it's the trend but they have low they hold the lapel mic i don't know why yeah yeah the first time I ever that. saw that was like at the movies. Yeah. Like before, like they do all those like basically ads and trivia. And there's like this dude hold. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? Yeah. Hold, and yeah. And I happen to be with, I think it was probably a comic book movie. So it's with Arrow Fish. And uh, he's like, no, it's like, it's like an online thing. And I'm like, that's so stupid. I know. It is a thing though. I don't know why don't or it. where it came from. Yeah, I have no everybody idea. Everybody on but TikTok does it. Yeah. Yeah. But those are more, which I love TikTok and Instagram reels. Yeah. But those are very like, well, for the most part, stream of consciousness, trendy type stuff, right? And, you know, it's it's really hard because as a videographer, you know, we'll produce a month-long project and it comes out sick, it's cinematic and it's amazing and we'll post it and it'll get like 400 views or 500 yeah. views. And then we'll film some silly TikTok thing that we created in 
five minutes, and that'll get like 5,000 views. And we'll get people out in public talking about that video over the cinematic one. Yeah. So, like, for me, it's like an ego check where it's like that type of content, the cinematic stuff, is fun and it's cool, and that is a way for us to flex our skills. But, like, the majority of the people out there are going to look more towards those silly TikTok videos. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, oh, my God, why did I just spend that much time, money <laughs> on that one video when I could have done a stupid TikTok? Yeah. And got 10 times the views, right? So it's weird, but... Like, I, I remember, I think it was, like, National Beer Day. It was probably a couple of years ago where you guys just went and shotgunned a beer. Oh, yeah. And then I think, yeah. like, Jordan had a, like, response. And it yeah, just it was just... Like... Yeah, we did one. It was... Uh, what did we do? So it was during COVID yeah. where we did a video where Ryan, who is my director of operations... Um, was coming into the office and he thought that we were going to be meeting with the client virtually. So he yeah. came in with like his pajamas and like a sweatshirt. He looked like like garbage and he came in and then I'm like, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, this is a real in-person meeting. And like the video was basically that premise and we posted yeah. it and it got a lot of responses. And so we were out actually before Tolson's was there. It was, uh, uh BBC. BBC. Yeah, first, yeah. We were eating lunch. It was me, him and my other two employees. And some guy behind us is like, and he walks over to us, like, are you guys Hawk Visuals? And we're like, yeah, yeah, like, whatever. And he's like, you guys do great videos. And the one that I just saw that I always love is that one video of Ryan coming in the office dressed in his pajamas. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, that's the video that you referenced that's for, so Mike, like, funny. the company that we work so hard yeah. to make these amazing videos. And that's the video that you guys remember. But, again, it's kind of like a an ego check, too. It's like, yeah. okay, like, those videos are perfect for branding for silly things people then eventually come to our page and they'll see our content hopefully yeah <laughs> but it was just and he ryan la laughs all the time because like he's now famous because of that one silly video that we spent yeah. maybe 15 minutes planning and shooting and like that was it <laughs> and it's just that so funny that like just that kind of i feel like that's a, a, a total business thing like you want to talk about the market oh, yeah so, someone's like hey you should do this and you're like yeah i mean i guess sure yeah and yeah. you know the first market i didn't really spend much time planning it and marketing it like i didn't even really thought about doing that sort of now like it's my obsession like how do i get more people yeah. to know about this yeah and at the time it just kind of like fell together and you know it, it it's the mark the, the the best market we've ever done we'll never be able to copy it was mm. right at the end of it was masks were still required but it was like, in, you know, on such and such a date, you know, we're, we're lifting the mass mandate. People had just gotten a stimulus check. Um, it was in March. So, like, spring was just breaking. It had rained Friday. It was supposed to pour on Sunday. Oh, God. Um, so it was, like, everything aligned to make this one day. Like, we had six vendors sell out completely. One no guy way. sold out twice. Like, he sold out wow. in about an hour. His wife brought him another. He was selling fudge, for one thing. Hmm. His wife brought him another shipment of fudge. He sold out again. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, where, where was this one? Uh, Mayflower. Mayflower. Okay. And uh, it was, like, they were blown up. We were blown Like, it was, it was so many people. We were, like, there were still, like, uh, restrictions on how many people you could have at an event. And we were like, I don't know, how, like, how do we keep track of how many people are here? You know, yeah, it became right. like, right. Uh, you know, this very stressful day. But you know, you, you just can't plan like what what's going to hit. You well, do gotta, you are you doing more of those? Too? Oh, we do them all the time. Now. Yeah, yeah. So I guess now for you, like, so how do you do? You always look back at that one event um, as like the the event that you do. Done? But we also like when we broke it down, like, why was this so good? Like, we realized that it it was kind of lightning in a bottle. Yeah. So even if we can get like half of that. Like, that to me is, like, where I want to be. And it's a real struggle. Like, like how how do you – it's, it's basically that age-old question, like, how do you make that viral video? I know. You know? It, it, it's it's part – so much of it's just timing. I, I think most of it's timing, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's definitely trends and things that happen that you can play off of. And if you watch enough – trending or viral youtube videos like there's usually some kind of overarching theme to yep. them or the way the thumbnails look or edited or whatever else like you can you can get 
pretty damn close. But like you said, it's a lot of it is just circumstantial. Like with that event, yeah, like that. I'm sure a lot of that was because of the weather, because of whatever, because of COVID, because of all these different things that happened. Yeah, made for this pretty awesome event. So it's hard to um, maybe like compare events to that because that's not necessarily going to be like every single event. Which maybe it will at some point. But that'd be great. It'd be great <laughs> if it was right. Yeah. But I think the circumstances for that one event created that yeah badass it, thing that you think about all the it, time and now. like with videos it's it's very much like you want to be you want to be on trend but you don't want to be the last guy there yeah you know like the when the wednesday dance which was on tiktok i know yeah we never did that you know i wish we should have but but it's like if you're not there in like the first couple of days I know. then you're just like lost in the crowd i know um, i know yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's it's also I don't want to just do things to do things either right. because I also want to have and not that like it takes away from the integrity of the brand and the company because there is kind of two different faces to the company. There's a kind of fun, silly, viral type content that yeah. for me it's more so that people can learn our true personalities because we all have different personalities and like it's fun to do that. And then we have a cinematic like actual stuff that we would post on a website. Yeah. So having those two things are important to me. But we also, you know, consciously think about, you know, do, are we supposed to do a Wednesday dance? Like, is that a thing that we should do? Like, we probably should have done that, right? Yeah. But like, would that have taken away from the brand? Probably not. Not that particular one. But there's definitely things that like, we try to stay away from just because Sure. Yeah. I'd rather not just do it for clout and be TikTok famous. I'd rather keep the integrity of what we do right because you're still trying to well. run a business yeah exactly exactly i mean we got on that whole did you ever do the ai uh trend it was like last a couple weeks ago you it was an app that if you put your selfie you oh would, you no, would spit out a bunch that. of ai yeah, yeah. things we did that and it was kind of cool yeah. and actually funny enough a lot of them were like space and like plane type things so yeah. like with the drone being that kind of vehicle it kind of made sense for us to post that yeah um but yeah, I'm, I try to be kind of conscious of those. So, like, that is that is kind of like, I don't want to say my resolution, but that is something that I need to work on. Like, we're, every year I kind of, like, sit and be like, okay, what am I doing on social media? Like, yeah. And, um... Because well, that's what you used to do in your previous job. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So, like, for you, I'm sure that's, like, in your mind is, like, I got to figure out... But it was also, like, before TikTok... And like reels really took off, right. so now I'm like, right. oh god, like it's that. Now I got to learn the five thousand dollar drone. Great. Now I yep. get and like yeah. we've done a couple of TikTok videos, not well, um, <laughs> but it is it's that trying to like, am I selling? And I think you guys do a great job of it. Jordan does a great job of it, being that face of the company. I'm like, yeah, oh, I just don't want it to be about me. Like, I don't want to be... It's the, hard, but you kind of have to at I know. some point, and too. I'm, and I'm kind of at that point yeah. where I'm like, all right, this year I got to be like, hey, what's up? Da, yeah. Da, da. But also, like, you shouldn't be fake and, like, over the top <laughs> yeah. either. But it's... And I, I had a hard time doing it, too, because I didn't really... I didn't... I didn't care too much that, like, it was my company, it was me. Like, it's about the whole team that I right. that I built. Right. So, this year, though, like, I'm building my own personal YouTube, TikTok, Instagram stuff, because then if if that particular side of the business quote unquote mm -hmm. grows then like hawk will grow because if i get popular and right. people watch my videos then it's like, gonna eventually go to hawk yep. visuals right so yeah. it's hard because i don't want to do the opposite where i'm just using my platform to promote me because i don't think that's fair to use my video company to promote my personal yeah. endeavors yeah it, <laughs> it, it, it is that real like uh, how much of my life do i want public yeah you know yeah and i'm pretty like once i eventually have kids like i won't I, I don't want to have my kids on social media i barely have my wife on yeah. social media we'll do photos here or there but um you know i i don't really want people to know exactly every single thing about me yeah it's just i don't i don't want everyone to see my right, entire right. life i don't care if they see in my house and they see um the business i run and like the things that i play golf i fish like that's that's on the table yeah. but what's off the table well, is like I don't show my parents, I don't show family time, family time yeah. stuff. Like that's that's off social media for me. Yeah, and it's funny, like you know, to bring Adam Savage back into it. Like he's a legit celebrity, you know, a hundred percent. And like he'll he'll, 
I watch his channel a lot. I think is it tested? Channel, tested. Yeah, I I love that. It's channel. really great. He's really good. Yeah. But then he'll also be like, oh, you know, this blah blah blah, and this that's I where I get my coffee every morning, and I'm like, I feel like you're giving out a lot. Of I know. Like I know if, for someone I, like him, for, for if sure. I really wanted to find out where you live, I could probably yeah. like narrow it down. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of weird people out there that yeah. could probably find out where you yeah. are, whether you like him or hate him. Like that's the thing that. Yeah, you gotta be careful about even like we even started thinking about it like when we started doing the youtube show um you know we'd put up you know jordan from speedwell and not to say that there's a difference between men and women but it got to me thinking about like oh, i'm putting these friends of mine up on youtube and saying where they work yeah, but and then I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. But for you, yeah. and I'm sure for them too, like you're just promoting right, who right, they right. are. But then it's so like, so, like Jordan. I know he's he a different. He's different case because he's like, very um, Ashley that used to work at Speedwell. Uh, she was on our first episode, and so it was Ashley from Speedwell. And then I'm like, that's how stalkers happen, you know? And so yeah, like, no, it's, it's like trying good. to keep like that. You know, we're nowhere near the point where people are going to become stalkers. You know, right. we're not getting that kind of traffic, but what if? You know, someday. No, it's a thought to think about, mm. but but I get where you're coming from because even with us too, if we're gonna cross promote, like I want my audience to go find Jordan at Speedwell because I love Speedwell, I love Jordan. Like, yeah. go see him. But I I get it where if you're kind of like a pretty big platform, if you do get there, yeah. Now you're opening up all your audience to go see him and hopefully they like him which i'm right. sure they will and but i think it's a it for the i think it's a net positive for the most part if you do decide to <laughs> show where they work and yeah. all that it's different if you say oh yeah he's from plymouth he lives here 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 like obviously that's yeah, a lot yeah. different and uh, um, jordan doesn't live in plymouth his address is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he lives here yeah, yeah exactly yeah um it's easy to find someone hit it with a <laughs> hit with a car <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah, you should definitely. So, are you you're planning on doing more? Yeah, like and your for me, it's like just such a big commitment because like I'm so busy already. Uh, we I talked know. ahead of time yeah. about like um, it looks like we might be getting an intern. Um, part of that will be on them, like maybe some TikTok stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so like I realized that I am the face of an EBR. Yeah. Whether I want to be or not. Um, and Fish, my business partner, is very uh, not the social person. He's, yeah, he seems like he's very behind the scenes yeah. type, and he's content with being the kind of behind the scenes kind of very guy. much. Yeah. And um, yeah, he, yeah, he's uh, an introvert to say the least. Um, he's had to kind of step up here and there. And there was uh, we do figure drawing. And usually I get up on the stage and just be like, hey, everybody, like, we're going to get started. And these are a couple things coming up. And, yeah. And I couldn't make one. And uh, so I'm like, all right, it's on you, man. He's like, you could just see the look in his face. Oh, yeah, he went white. Yeah. Yeah, real quick. And yeah. I got texts from people. Like, and the figure drawing group is so, it's a, it's one of is that the longs. one that we filmed, like, a while ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah super yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a small group and, like, everyone becomes friends you know because it's such a small group so it's basically him standing in front of people we know yeah i was getting texts he's super uncomfortable (laughs) yeah yeah well they probably don't see him do that very often so they they uh, see you do that yeah yeah so uh so so i know it's pretty much on me to do you know that kind of side of it and where we're doing uh the buzzards bay farmer's market this year i'm like that really needs to have that kind of real Instagram, TikTok. I think presence. just everything you do. I mean, because you don't need to have a, a professional videographer follow you around. No. Like, obviously, if you do want that, you know, I know a guy who might help you with that if you need it. Um, <laughs> but who? It, I don't know. <laughs> Never, yeah, some some guy from Plymouth who's now not in Plymouth anymore. I'm too busy being like, oh, yeah. with the Bruins. Yeah, uh, Charlie Coyle. Yeah, documentaries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know whether it is your intern or you like you sh- you i think you should be filming a podcast or not maybe filming the entire thing but yeah. get a couple of quick clips and post that post your farmer's market stuff or whatever like anything you do like why not yeah it? like, it's just that commitment of like having just i just gotta bite the bullet and do it yeah, yeah. like uh, it, it's definitely gonna it's gonna take a lot of time in the beginning for sure but yeah. if you have an intern who's 
going to do it for free or next to nothing, like, take advantage of that. That's right. You know? You get to kick the earn turn. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah, exactly. Get get to work. Life yeah. sucks, I'm man. not paying you for nothing. Oh, wait, I'm not <laughs> wait, paying, I'm paying you at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah. I'm not giving you credits for nothing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But that's the way, I mean, I know, because it's, it's, when we work with the documentary in Weymouth 400, which is basically Plymouth 400, Weymouth is a couple sec- years later, second, yeah. couple years later, yeah. Um, was Weymouth the second town? The second town. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, which is pretty cool. So, you know, George Raymond, who runs that, learned a lot from Michelle Pecorero, who was yeah. with P400. Um, and so, like, a lot of their events, you know, in the very beginning of when they were doing the 400 was... They were they were pretty good events, but once we helped them create videos and content for that, they, they blew up because people got to see it yeah. online. So, it's and almost that, like... Is that what the documentary is about? Well, so a little bit. So the documentary, yeah. um, I knew it was somehow connected. Yeah, it's it's it took us a, a while to get that documentary in place. But so it's really, it's about the history of Weymouth through the eyes of the people who inhabit its town, right? So mm-hmm. in the documentary, because it's the 400th year, last year we wanted to have this kind of legacy piece for the town. So yeah. it started off going over the quick history, which is a terrible history of of murdering. Native Americans, Native Americans, not a great story yeah. at all. But, it's, but we, it we, is the history it's of the pretty history, much yeah. all of America. <laughs> pretty pretty yeah. much. So we skirted that a little bit. We talked about it. Um, and then the whole documentary proceeds with basically the people who inhabit the villages between the, um, the police chief, the fire chief, the mayor, normal, regular people. We interviewed, I don't know if you remember, um, Michael Chesna, who was killed in action, I think, in 2018. He was a police officer in Weymouth. Um, um, the, he, the, there's stickers on people's yeah. cars everywhere in Weymouth. And Weymouth has a very strong uh, Blue Lives Matter police yeah. um, you know, presence in there. So they definitely love their police. We got to interview the parents of, of Michael Chesna. And we got to obviously interview Charlie Coyle. And all these different people that make up who Weymouth is through its history, through its sports, through its veterans, through its nonprofits. Um and it's a really nice way of like encompassing what this what last year was for Weymouth at its current state. Yeah, we talked about history, but then we kind of talked about where the town was currently in their 400th year, and then hopefully 400 years from now, like what does the town want to become? So it was a lot to cover because we covered events, we covered different scenarios and different uh, people in town, but it really was trying to create a legacy piece for for Weymouth. Are we good? Yeah, it, this fucking thing is just so finicky. And <laughs> Fish will probably put this in there because he's a pain in my ass. <laughs> I, see it, you, I see you doing something like, over But it's like, it's like, you clip, and then I move it like a millimeter, and it's like, beep, and I'm like, come on. Can you just... Um, you're talking about the levels of where yeah, I'm yeah, at? Yeah, yeah. Should I get closer to the mic? Or? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, you're fine now. Okay. But it's just <laughs> like that, it's, it's like, can't hear him. Too loud. Yeah, too loud. Yeah. <laughs> Peeking, can't hear him. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, did, now, did you pitch this idea to them, or did they pitch it to you? No, so it's the opposite. So George Raymond, if you ever get a chance to meet him, he's like the most gung-ho, get-things-done type of guy I've ever met in yeah. my entire life. So when we were originally working with the 400 back in 2018, just on some of their events, you know, we had talked a little bit about creating sort of a legacy piece or something for the town in 2022. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. We didn't know what it was yet. And I remember this one time he, he texted me and he's like, we're going to film a documentary for the town. And I said, okay, like with yeah. us, or are you going to hire someone else? I'm like, no, we're going to use you. We're going to do a documentary and it's going to be about town and the whole history of the town and everything that's happening in 2022. So I was like, uh, okay, how do I do a documentary? Uh, how the hell am I going to film this? I don't have enough people to film this yet. I got to yeah. hire people to do it, so on and so forth. Um, but we just talked about what this could possibly be and was it really a viable option to pitch to the mayor? To, obviously, because the town had to pay for this thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and the board for the 400. So, like, we had to create a pitch for, you know, what this was. And the overall pitch was we're creating a legacy piece that would showcase the pride of Weymouth through its citizens and people who are currently living there. So it's kind of going to stand as this time capsule, so to speak, so that if people 20 years from now want to see where Weymouth was in 
2022 right. that could watch this documentary. And even if you're not from Weymouth, like there's still things in here that you'll you'll love because there's um, you know there's a big veteran piece which just kind of translates out throughout Massachusetts, oh, not sure. just in yeah. not just in Weymouth. And we uh, there's an Abigail Adams statue that got dedicated in Weymouth uh end of december okay which was super cool we filmed the entire process which i'm sure you love like of casting it and yeah and how it was created which was pretty badass oh, and cool, it yeah. was it was cool and she's from weymouth so it's got some cool history there yeah so there's just a lot of cool little chapters throughout this entire documentary that whether you're from weymouth or not like they're cool stories and obviously they're shot really well and they're cinematic and if you like our style you'll like this documentary yeah but um yeah, it was just kind of like, here's the pitch. Hopefully the mayor will go for it and the board will go for it. They went for it. And now it was like, okay, we have to plan an hour and a half documentary filming for a year and a half. Right. So, th- which is way bigger than we've ever done before. Typically, it's a you know 15-minute video that might take two months to film, edit, and that kind of thing. This was a year and a half project. So, it was hard. It definitely was now, hard. Now, I know how I am. And... Once someone puts that little seed in my brain, yeah, I'm already planning like nine other things down the line. Yeah, so like we just, we started this YouTube show, and now I have like a Word doc on my computer of like, oh, this would be a cool show. Oh, this would be a cool show. Totally. Do you already? Are you already like? I already have It'll be a other cool documentary. documentary. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I'm already pitching documentaries to my clients, yeah. even from that documentary we probably have possibly two spinoffs we can do we're hoping we can get one funded for abigail adams because it really is it's an incredible story about just who she was and the artist who originally made the mold he passed away during the process and his daughter picked it up it's a really like it's a great story so we're hoping that gets funded and if it does that'll be probably like a half an hour documentary or so um we could do one on schools through Weymouth. We could do one on the police. So we yeah. could do some spinoffs. But also, just in general, like, it, it was a lot of fun to do this documentary. So now I'm thinking of clients that I know could probably use one of these, and I'm pitching it to them, too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm using the way that we pitched it to the mayor to just pitch to it to them. The other yeah, one. yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, just, it's, it's really fun, and that's a big reason why I picked it, too, was I realized that there was probably going to be a lot of side work and work that would come about through Mm -hmm. doing this and the town of weymouth now knows who we are yeah which is great and uh i i also just love the town too i bought my house in weymouth because of the documentary yeah Yeah, i I really didn't think much not uh, not that i didn't know about weymouth i did a little bit but i was i'm a plymouth guy so i always thought i lived somewhere around here in plymouth but this the the people in weymouth and the trajectory of where the town is going, I want it to be a part of it. And if I made a documentary about the town, I feel like I have to kind of, like, tell people, show people, like, I'm invested in this just as much as as you are. So I'm going to buy a house here, live here, raise a family, because I made a documentary about the town. So like, I really want to... It's not like an out-of-towner rolling in for cash. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Um, So, yeah, I'm hoping we get a lot more work from this and we learned a lot and it's just it's it's crazy because the hour i think it's an hour and 15 minute long documentary the amount of hours of content that we have that we didn't get to use is hundreds i think we have like six or seven terabytes worth of which is a lot of content that we didn't even get to use which is that's a ton of stuff yeah (laughs) so it's like it's a shame that we aren't able to use all of that for something else we might be able to repurpose it for a director's cut or a version two documentary or whatever outtakes outtakes yeah stuff like that and that you know that's always been a thing that with all of our projects we're always going to have not wasted things but just things we don't put in a project this is just that but on a gigantic scale you know and that's like even from shooting the youtube show our goal was to make it like 12 minutes i don't think we've ever come close to that what do you uh, currently at right now? ends up around 30. Okay, yeah. Um, but that's from best case scenario, <laughs> two hours of footage, you know? Really, yeah. Yeah, but like some of them have been uh, three, four-ish or more. Really, yeah. You know, because it's wow. like you shoot each pair individually and you usually let them go for about 45 minutes to an hour and then you just cut all that down 
Um, and again, it's all self-taught. Like I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, when you, know? you when you're doing that show, yeah. Like, are you trying to direct the people who are there to to keep things somewhat brief, or are you just like no, talk about no, it for however long you want to talk it's about just and we'll cut. whatever happens? And then it's very kind of like. Um, we find the most important thing is getting the right people paired together. Yeah. Because um, some people are very like, y- you need, and this is the bizarre thing, like, especially that show is very local. Like, it's it hasn't really taken off yet. It's only nine episodes, so it doesn't get a ton of downloads, but I know it's a good show. Um, when it first, the first one, even though it was bad, I sent to a lot of my friends who lived out of state and I said, is this Plymouth funny or is this funny? Hmm. Cause that's, that's really a, that's important. a great question too. Yeah. And, uh, pretty much everyone came back and like, this is just funny. I'm like, okay. Cause you can't tell. Cause like, I think Carl's funny. Yeah. I, I think it's hilarious, but not too. everybody thinks right. Carl's funny. Right. Right. And, um, so then it kind of like boils down and like, there's, like huge sections and the only direction I really will give people is you know everyone loves this town so much where they're trying to like promote stuff like you mean like their own not even their own they'll be like hey don't isn't you know Mayflower doing such and such and I'd be like guys I don't know when this video is going to go up right so if you're dropping an event it's probably going to not make you know don't waste your time yeah Um, so like there'll be a few like directions but it's usually stuff like that like um, you know, we've had uh, episodes that were sponsored, so it's like one rules like don't shit on the sponsor. Yeah. You know, obviously. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't yeah. care if you don't like the drink, you're yeah. gonna like it today. Right, right. Um but you know, just and other than that, it's just like you put the drink down in front of them. These people are industry people, they're bartenders, they're, you know, wait staff, they're used to talking. And they'll talk to each other at this town, everyone's friends, so it kind of like it's friends sitting having drinks and then it just they drink a lot pretty quickly and it goes off the rails and that's like where the gold is (laughs) that's yeah that's the gold yeah um and then it's like oh so i've had people like reach out and be like can i be on your show i'm like i don't even know who you are like that's awesome so you not only have to be funny you have to be very specific kind of funny yeah like i had someone say oh can i be on your show and i'm like are you funny and then they told me a 20 minute joke and i'm like have you seen the show? Like, yeah. you know no one is? is on it's that. It's not a stand-up. Yeah, no yeah. one's on that, like, the screen for more than, like, 15 seconds at a time. Yeah. So it's, like, set up punchline, set up punchline, right. set up punchline. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that, I think it's, for for us, so when we when we plan shoots, too, we, it's, it's that kind of, like, funny middle ground where you don't want to over-direct things too much because yeah. it's, like, now all they're thinking about is I got to fit in this box. Right. But then you don't want to let them do whatever they want because now it's like, well, my original idea for the show is to have X, Y, and Z, and I'm not even getting any of this, right? right so right, it's right. kind of like it's that point of which, like, how much directing do I do? And I'm sure, like, with you, and I, I struggle with it all the time as, as far as if we do create some kind of show for a client or for ourselves, like, how much of this do I really have to predetermine and create versus just let happen because I've brought in the right people right so for you i guess like how do you how do you find that medium is it really dependent on the people you come in hyper dependent on the people so how do you properly vet those people to make Um, sure that they're gonna be good for your show so every episode that we shoot we try to bring in one new person from the town or just from the town like we'll kind of be like i think this person would be a good fit doesn't matter who they are doesn't, what no, industry they're in no. it's just and that was the other thing is like we're like this isn't about the restaurant industry so they don't have to be restaurant people okay that's usually where we pull from because we shoot on like a monday afternoon and that's just and free. that's usually yeah <laughs> that's yeah. just free to yeah. drink on a monday afternoon yeah um so like we'll bring in one new person maybe two and that's kind of like we'll see how they do and based on that, we'll be like, all right, we need to bring that person back more or like, shit, that person needs to be on all the time. And so it's kind of like building up a, a pool of people that you can pull Yeah, you're from. like core characters. Yeah. And then of. it's like, uh, do you know Dan Mahoney? He hosts uh, uh, Bar Talk and he used to be- Yeah, I was going to say, he sounds super yeah. familiar, yeah. Uh, I, I hate giving him a compliment, but I said to someone the other day, <laughs> I'm like, 
if this was like a sport, he would be the first overall draft pick for this show. Really? Yeah. Because it is his. He's so quick witted, and his humor so weird and different. Yeah. But it's hysterical, and like he can come up with something so fat. Uh, there was one we did a tequila episode, and he tells the story about the development of tequila and where it came from and how it was like used to purify water and then they left it too long or something and fermented it and blah, blah, blah. And the other guy's like, wow, yeah. And then he, at the end he goes, yeah, I just made that all. <laughs> like, yeah, he did it right. so smoothly. Like, so he, matter of like, fact. He, he, like, he didn't, th- I don't even know how he thinks about it as he's, t- like, yeah. saying the story. Yeah. But, like, he's just, he's so quick and so, uh, he he is one of those people that I'm like, you should be a fucking TikTok influencer. Cause, yeah. Like, you get it. Um, all right, that's um, enough that's compliments. Yeah, for him. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll never say anything nice about no, him. Again. No more for him. Yeah, um, yeah. But then, so then you like, so if you're bringing someone new, you're like, all right, let's pair him with Dan. Because yeah. even if they're gonna struggle, Dan's gonna carry. Because you know that those yeah. core people who are who they are and what they're right. like. So you know this new person probably will pair pretty well with yeah. one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. and then you need someone who can kind of hold it together, drinking a lot of booze. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a lot of. Uh, thought that goes into uh, that's probably where we spend most of the time like who hmm. we bring in and who we're going to pair with who you well, are you to, you I, don't want it to be the same pairs all the time yeah that's that's the thing yeah. and like are you because are you always the one that's the glue in the show are you even in the show i haven't not, even seen it yet i'm not but. in the show at all okay uh well i shouldn't say that i did one episode um and it was kind of like one of those moments where you're like well i'm not gonna ask someone to do something that i wouldn't do and yeah. um it was so it was a sponsored episode and we've had people reach out and be like hey you know how about you drink our beer or seltzer or whatever and you're like that's a, not a good idea because <laughs> yeah. like if we tr- no one's gonna trash it where like if you're just drinking a rum drink and it's a shitty drink no one has any problem being like "Ugh, this is gross yeah but if you're drinking a mayflower beer everyone's gonna be like mmm Regardless, Mayflower right. makes great beer. It, they do, yeah. but, but you, you feel obligated yeah. to not shit on them. Exactly, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, so it became like, all right, I, I like the idea of having kind of a sponsored episode, but how do we do it? And so we were sponsored by a uh, vodka company out of Ontario. I think it was Ontario. No way. Cool. And um, so they sent us some vodka. <laughs> And we played a drinking game where there were reward shots and penalty shots. No way. So even if you weren't a vodka guy, you're like, oh, at least this isn't a shitty shot. Yeah. You know, so there was a joy in just drinking the vodka. Have you ever heard of Stratego? No. No. So like when I pick the game, I'm like, this will be great. No one's heard of this game. Apparently it was big only in like the early eighties. Wasn't born yet. Sorry. Um, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no one else was either, apparently. Yeah, right. So we turned it into shot Tigo. <laughs> nice. And um that that was I think we shot more footage for that than anything else. Yeah. Did it go um, over pretty well too? That uh yeah. I mean we didn't get hate mail from the sponsor, so yeah. That's well, the do, do you, so I'm I'm curious too, because I I'm hoping that we eventually get some sponsors for things too so like yeah. the sponsors you work with do they give you you have to mention us this many times we have to do this this and this um, or do they just give you the well so alcohol and that's we were it? we were very like uh, we've had two episodes sponsored and like the first one um he's, he was like a friend um liquor distributor uh that sponsored us so like we put the liquor front and center like we were never given guidelines yeah. Um, we always told them, like, please watch the show first. Just so you know, like, <laughs> so, what you're getting yourself You know, into. people say yeah. some weird shit. <laughs> um, you know, we don't want to misrepresent your brand, but most alcohol people are like, yeah, fine. Like, we're giving people booze. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, it's kind of like a whole package thing. So, like, we give them sponsorship of the podcast and the show. Um, they sent us T-shirts, so like everyone's wearing Beatty's T-shirts, and you know, Carl is such like a ham that you know he like constantly talks about it. But then like everyone's getting a little drunk, and so then they start like goofing on the names, and you know, it's it it's, it it um, 
it, it went well and it actually turned into two episodes because we had so much footage I, I'm like there's so much good stuff that didn't make it so we did like an outtakes that's great um, that's great so really they got two episodes mm. um, but yeah I mean some some people are a little more we're, we're getting more and more formal in our sponsorship because it's just like becoming more common yeah you know yeah which is nice well, I mean, you, the podcast I listen to, too, I mean, there's so many different people who are sponsoring this podcast yeah. from dude wipes to, like, there's just so many different things, like, people can sponsor. It doesn't even matter if you're not an alcohol podcast. They yep. might give you whatever. I can't even think of a sponsor. But, like, there's just so Blue many Apron, different people. Purple Blue Apron, Apron. Yeah, like, yeah, any yeah, of those yeah. kind of things. Like, they're just sponsoring podcasts left and right. So, And the funny thing is, like, those people – um, you know, Blue Apron, Purple Mattress, Me Undies, Bomba Socks, all those. None of those sponsored this podcast, but they could. Yeah. Just email us. Reach out to uh, us today. Yeah. yeah. Um, are driving smaller companies to find podcasts within their budget. So mm-hmm. we are um, – the Bar Talk one just picked up a sponsor. They're a, a company that just launched an app. And they're based out of the UK, and I'm like, "How did how wow. did you find us?" That's that to yeah. me. That's like that, like moment where you're like, "Uh, why?" Yeah, like, <laughs> how did you even see our stuff? Yeah, crazy. And she's like, "Oh, our marketing guy listens to your show." And I'm like, "Shut up! That's so cool." That's so you know? crazy. Um, I love those moments. So I've told I know I've told the story before, but um, there's an illustrator, um, uh, Jim Maffood. And he was kind of like one of the original guys in the whole drink and draw movement, which is kind of what caused an art to start in the first place. And so I reached out and I got him on the podcast. And so in the beginning, like pre-show, when it's not someone like you that I know, um, you know, I kind of give them like, you know, art started in 2011. It started as a drink and draw, blah, yep. blah, blah. And so like I get two seconds into that. And he's like, I, I know. And I'm like, what do you mean you know? He's like, I know who you are. <laughs> no and way. I'm like, what? What do you mean? He's like, I have a music podcast, and you had Wax Taylor on, and Wax Taylor is – I mean, a friend of big Wax Taylor fans. So I, he sent me your episode. He's like, so I want to see who else you had on. He's like, you had Doc Hammer. He's a friend of mine, so I listen to that. But he's like, so I know who you are. No way. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's crazy. And it was just like – I couldn't wrap my head around it. So did that did that podcast then feel like it was more of a – conversation with friends because he kind of knew who you were a little bit um yeah i think all the good ones feel that way yeah but um that's super interesting that he knew who you were like yeah yeah so like he was super cool to talk to and i feel like anytime a stranger comes in and friend leaves that was a good podcast yeah you know yeah that's when you know you did something right and that you both also can connect to because yeah. of the questions you asked and the way you ask questions and talk to someone like and it, that's and it super feels, rewarding. And I feel like that makes a good episode because I think that's what people want to hear. Yeah, you know they don't want to hear a list of questions, right? You know, and it's like an interrogation basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's that's the worst the worst kind of podcast where it just seems like I'm asking you a question, you answer. Next question. Ugh. You answer it. Next question. <laughs> like there, those, there's just no chemistry, but. Those are our shortest episodes. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Because usually after yeah. a while, like, I can't even, I can't. Do you, does it come into your mind to not even post those? Or are you someone like, um, no matter what I do, I'm going to post it just so I can get it out there? There's been a few where I'm like, I don't even want to, but it's also there's, I mean, we put the pressure on ourselves with a <laughs> weekly show. Yeah. Um, there's, there's been a few that I'm like, I'm not happy with that. Yeah. Because um, I know with us, it's hard because there, there's probably been a dozen or so that like we shot the video. This is like more for internal stuff. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't I don't know if I really want to post that or not. And in like shooting it, we're like, oh, this is cool. It's fun. And I watch it again. I'm like, why did we even do that? Whether it's just not up to the standards of how it was shot or the content was just not like on par for what we do. So there's been times where I've struggled with like, I really should post this because we spent a whole day doing this. I don't want to waste our time and not post it, but I also don't want to have my viewers be like, what what the hell was that? Yeah. (laughs) And and it's tough because like where we bring in people to interview, 
they tell people ahead of time, you know, like, oh, I'm going to be on a podcast. Yeah. And I want to be like, uh, we're not posting it because you're boring as shit. <laughs> yeah. That, that happened in our yeah. documentary, which was super awkward. We had a segment that, uh, it was a historical segment and the woman that we, we, t- we prepped her ahead of time that like, we don't read off of scripts. We don't, it's just yeah. you and I chatting and it's like, very Did organic. Bring a script? she brought a script. We had to hold up kind of cue cards for her to talk into and we watched the footage again and it was extremely apparent that she yeah. was reading off a script. So we're like, I've, oh, had, I've we had people can't. bring notes. Yeah, it's just and we're like, yeah. we can't, we can't do it. Like yeah. we wish we could use you. You were great and you're nice, and, and the segment was like good, but it's just I can't use that. And so she came to the premiere that we had, and it was like a private event. She's like, oh, I'm so excited to see the segment, and we're just sitting there like, oh, you're not in it. Like yeah. this is gonna be super awkward. Sorry. And then I never yeah. really saw her after that but yeah. it's it's those tough decisions where it's like the integrity in the overall project has to be this certain way and if right. you don't fit into it I'm like I'm sorry but it's just not gonna not gonna work yeah. i know podcasting is a little bit different but it's also <laughs> i'm sure it's super awkward if you're like trying to pull things we out had, of we someone. Had someone walk out really yeah well it was a zoom but oh, mean, okay. like cut the the podcast off in the middle yeah and she's like i'm not here to recap my my uh career wow and i'm like oh well do you do you kind of like again maybe vet do you talk to someone beforehand to even uh, know what so they... i had booked her through her pr her pr reached out and it's like oh this is you know who we have and they have a new album coming out and we get a lot of up and coming people you know like i would love to get the tom cruises and will smiths and people who didn't need their careers recapped but you know we get a lot of character actors and um you know up and coming musicians and um, you know that's not a like my goal is to get new people to hear your stuff sure you know yeah sure and to kind of uh my idea is if they listen to the podcast and be like, this sounds like a really cool person, I'm going to go check out what they're doing. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I mean, you need to be cooler. Like, Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, even say the company. Just don't even look at his yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. P- pigeon eyes. Yeah. What is pigeon, it called? No. My God. My, so Ryan always jokes that if he, if I eventually fire him or he goes off on his own, he's going to make a company called, um, Peking Penguin Productions. <laughs> She's like, where hawks don't go, penguins will go because it's we do like everything above the water oh, penguins are below water yeah, so that's yeah. like the running joke oh, with the company funny. so um yeah. yeah yeah just yeah but uh yeah and she just didn't and to me that like you're going in cold i know nothing i right. kind of almost right. purposely don't do any if not very little research because i kind of want to ask the dumb question because mm. my listener probably doesn't know you. Right. So if I ask the dumb question, they I'm just kind of like I'm putting myself in the listener's position. Right. Um so it's kinda of like, you know, like kinda of how'd you get started, you know, the kinda of like basic shit and like you wait for them to say interesting things and then you ask more. Right. You know? Right. You, you listen and ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, Oh, and that's when I started on this um some sort of nationwide touring band that did Harry Potter inspired music, which I'm like, that is the most bizarre thing. That is super bizarre. And I'm yeah. like, let's like, and I was kind of like, asking yeah, like let's cool. talk like, about what that. What do you mean inspire? Like, how, like, was it the soundtrack? No, no, it wasn't soundtrack. It was like rock music inspired. And I'm like, you know, it's just it sounds it, amazing. It's such a weird thing. Yeah. Like, right. And then, um, I said something about, uh, like checking out one of her, her videos on YouTube. And she just didn't like the fact that I wasn't familiar with her work. Mm. And um, I, I honestly, I, I whatever. Like she didn't want to talk to me. That's cool. Yeah. I was more concerned about burning the bridge with the PR. <laughs> yeah. You know, because yeah. they got us a lot of, of guests. And right. That, and right. so it was just like one of those. Like I emailed them right away, been like, I don't know what just happened. Right. You know, I blacked out. I don't know. What like, happened. I, yeah. like all of a sudden, she's just like, I don't want to talk anymore. And yeah, yeah, that's so. that's rough. So that episode, I, I don't even think I saved. <laughs> just automatically delete yeah it was only like 20 minutes really you know, it wasn't a full episode and it was just like 
Yeah. And how do you how do you end that on? That's a, super. I know, it's tough to even yeah. end that kind of thing. Yeah. Without making her look like she just walked out on an interview, which is basically what she did. I know. So. Yeah, that's tough. That's definitely tough. And the crazy part, couldn't even tell your name. <laughs> really? I have absolutely no idea. No idea. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. So you can't trash her on this podcast? Then? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, no, I, I know you wouldn't but do that. Maybe a little. Maybe. <laughs> after, after we, we yeah. do this, yeah. yeah we'll but talk it, about that, it. That's also one of those like weird, and I'm sure it happens to you. Um, so we started doing comedy shows, because why not? And um, one of the, the comics who was headlining showed up. I'm like, hey, John, what's up? You know, good to see you. Shook his hand. And Fish is like, oh, I'm Fish. And he's like, oh, yeah. And the comic walks away. I'm like, bro, he's been on the show. He's like, what? I'm like, we interviewed him. You know him. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, I think that was one of the Zoom interviews when I wasn't there. I'm like, nope. It was like right before COVID and we interviewed him. And it's to the point like we'll get a spike on a weird episode or like I'll be looking through something and see an episode and I'll see a name and be like, no idea who that is. Yeah. You know, and no I'll have to like read is. the show notes and be like, oh yeah. yeah. All right. Cause yeah. it's like, I don't know, over 300 people, you know? I have a terrible memory for names, yeah. but a great memory for faces. So I get clients saying things like, hey, Matt, how are you? And this is like from years ago. Yeah. I'm like, hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, bro. Like, what's up? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. we'll talk about this video. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're that guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. you. Like, understand. Got it. I do that but constantly. I just, it's hard because it's, it, it's super awkward if yeah. someone's like, hey, Matt, how are you? I'm like, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. But hey, I'll find out eventually because we'll talk about something. And like, oh most, yeah, most Eric. of the time, most, yeah, of, the most time. of the time. Yeah, it, I was yeah. Uh, the the job I got laid off right before COVID. Um, I was there maybe like two months, and my boss was getting married, and she's she's very much a tomboy. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm not into the whole like bridal shower thing, blah yeah. blah. She's like, but a bunch of us are going out for drinks to Cabby Shack afterwards. Love that place, by the way, and. Uh, it's like the first work thing I was invited on, so I'm like, I have to go. So now I'm sitting around. <laughs> Obligated to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but like you want to be part of the team, whatever. Yeah. So like sitting around a table with a bunch of people I do not know. You know, they're just the people that I work with for like two months. Having drinks. And this guy comes up. He's like, Andy, what's going on? I'm like, hey, man. He's like, oh, I just ran in my aunt the other day. I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that's cool, blah, blah. Yeah. And, you know, five minutes, he walks away, and they're like, who is that? I'm like, I have zero <laughs> idea who that yeah. was. Yeah. I'm like, I couldn't even tell you what context I know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, does that happen often? I'm like, yeah. Like, all, all, the, all time. the time. All the yeah, time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's it's embarrassing if I'm with my wife and someone comes up, and she knows who yeah. this person is. Like, how do you know him? That's the guy that we met? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. At that event? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, oh, my God. It's just when I When I was married, I, I never inter introduced Fish because we work together so much that I always assume he knows everyone I know, which yeah. isn't the case. Yeah. But when I was married... I always told my ex-wife, if I'm not introducing you, it's because I don't know who I'm talking to. Introduce yourself. That way I find out who they <laughs> that's are. A good, that's a good trick. Yeah, I should it's steal a, that. And, and then I can just be that's like, oh, a damn good idea. me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Damn, I got to write that down. <laughs> that's actually, that's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. yeah. That's so, an interesting idea. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to steal that. And then you're just like, <laughs> then you're on those days, you're like, I wish my wife was here. <laughs> yeah, right. Why the hell is she? Why is she yeah. sick? Yeah. 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 No, I totally get that. Yeah, it's um, does do interactions like that inspire you though like to create content from that like i know for me like a lot of the videos that i get inspired by are just they come about through normal day activities right See, i i think i don't and that that's really where my 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 i have to redirect my creative juices into yeah. like what is the daily stuff that i'm doing that i should be making into videos opposed to being like I have an idea for a video, but it's usually, like if I have an idea for a video, it's like a video series. Yeah. Um, like I want to do a series of videos for the old colony cast where we go on location and shoot film and kind of like tour weird places. Not, mm -hmm. you know, not Plymouth Rock, but like maybe a, a, a weird historic house or. or yeah, off or, the beaten yeah. path kind of things. Yeah. And call it what we did on my summer vacation. That's a cool name, too. Um, uh, it's copyrighted. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Damn. Um, but it fits. It fits with the the theme of the show, and we can do a bunch of fun stuff, and you know, maybe like short twenty minute videos or something. But I don't ever think about like, oh, this would make a good reel, or this would make a good. Yeah. You know, like I don't think that 
because those are like what 60 seconds is a even, long like one? i'm not even saying even that like more of you know when you think about like the shows you're creating like does normal day life ever direct an episode of what are we all calling the cast or any other uh, thing that you're doing and maybe like that now kind of kind of yeah uh, in some ways so the old colony cast we try to like line up with the seasons so like we just did a blizzard 78 because it's winter time um we always try to have a christmas episode um bar talk we tend to um talk about like how different you know i feel like we always talk about parade day because that's a big thing in the restaurants here but that's such a local thing it's hard to yeah to to translate to everyone else um i don't yeah i don't know if like the i mean other than just trying to like work around people's schedule and you know we have a uh hannah the host of the uh old colony cast is pregnant so now we're trying Mm -hmm. to like create a backlog so she can like enjoy her baby yeah yep um so yeah it's i don't i don't think that's ever really like weighed into it other than like well let's do a holiday episode yeah i think it might be maybe easier for us because we do video and like longer form video where like we just did one um it was for tiktok and instagram it was the top five questions that i get from clients all the time and it's because it happened that day i'm like screw it we're making a video because i'm just so sick of this happening it was always like like, hey, I know you just shot this today, but like, can I get that video tonight? And I'm like, no, you can't get that tonight. Or it's How like, do since you... you're here doing video, can you get some photos while you're here? It's like, no, we can't so, do that. Or we, we obviously will we'll cater to them, but like, that happens all the time. How do you shoot that without directing it at someone? Spe- like, so you're not. It's just it's them. generic enough. Like, yeah. we're not gonna like. Because um... I feel like I could do that kind of thing with like, oh, our, you know top five questions that we get from vendors yeah at our markets but to me it's always like that's such a fucking stupid question like why are you asking that yeah yeah i mean we try to keep it you know it's it's all in good fun like we're not trying to make fun of our clients it's just more of a thing that like as a business it happens right Right. and even like we did one it was top five questions that i get while flying a drone which is always like can you spy my neighbor's house can i (laughs) I fly it how high can you fly how much does it cost all those and it's all it's just it's a silly video. Yeah. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. Like, I obviously, I want you to ask me questions while I'm flying it. Right. For the most part. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's kind of like it's it's teetering on that line of being offensive, which I don't want to be offensive. Right. But it's also and like. you don't want to be like, this is the dumb question that Jim asked me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I will never, yeah, I yeah. will never, never obviously do that. But it's more just, it, it gets my brain thinking of, okay, that, that'll be a fun video that we'll do. Yeah. And they're not always like that. That might just be a situational thing that. We're doing something, and Premiere Pro is giving us this one issue that's like constantly happening, and so we're going to make a video on that yeah. and spin it to be funny. Or like we do videos on little company outings that we do. So we did during Thanksgiving, we did a um, the hand turkey like decorations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we did a, that video, oh, and each cool. each one of my employees had their own little personality. Curtis, who actually is an artist, did this like amazing yeah. hyper realistic turkey, whereas Julie did like a crappy little hand sketch kind of thing yeah so um but that just came about because we were talking about thanksgiving and they're like hey remember when we used to do those hand turkeys when we were kids oh yeah 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 and they're like that actually might be kind of a fun video to recreate for the office yeah so like for for us i pull inspiration from that kind of thing for for video so i was just curious if that ever really no, came into your head for i, I think it your needs, content. i think it needs to happen more and um but you just like you think more about like a series more than just like a one thing so you might take that for example that turkey thing and might say okay i'm gonna make a show on that's literally how bar talk happened how did that start so um we were playing trivia at new world tavern just mean fish hanging out not working trying to you know this was before like now i have to be like i'm not working today go away um and Carl comes up and he's like, he's like, you know that really smart black guy? And we're like, uh, hi, Carl. <laughs> that and, is something that he yeah. would say. <laughs> and we're like, do you mean Neil deGrasse Tyson? And I don't know why that's who we jump to, but that's I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a podcast. I'm like, oh, yeah, Star Talk. Star Talk. I I'm Star like, Talk. I love Star Talk. It's a great show. He's like, I want to do that. I'm like, why do you want to be on Star Talk? And he goes, no, I want to do Bar Talk. And then just walks away. 
And me and Fish are like, oh, shit. Like, now we have to do this. That's a great idea. Wow. I know that's how it started. Yeah, that was just which a I throw, actually um, throwaway joke and super now it's, throwaway yeah. joke. Yeah, I actually met Neil deGrasse Tyson. We oh, he, out, really? he came to he was doing his like tour where mm-hmm. he he'd talk about space, which was amazing. My brother yeah. and I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I think it was in I want to say it was at what there's like a little uh, a comedy venue in Boston. Um, nice. I can't think of what it yeah. is, but whatever. It, it's it's like a, it's usually made for like comedy shows, and yeah. he was there, so we bought tickets, and we bought like the upgraded one where after the show you can go like ask him a question and like yeah. shake his hand. So it was just it was really that's pretty really cool, cool to talk yeah. to him, and it's funny. So if you ever see him, at least at that time, he doesn't wear shoes when he's up on stage, which is weird. Okay, so I asked him like, why do you not wear shoes? Like, well, usually if it's like an older venue, I want to like feel like I'm grounded. In, in the history of the venue, which is such a weird thing to think about, but that's that's what he does. Huh. He'll take his shoes off, and he'll just be wearing socks on that's, stage. That's really interesting. Yeah, so it's super weird, but guys like that are just, I mean, he's he's brilliant, so yeah. the way his mind works is just fascinating. What, I mean, we're kind of over time, but what, whatever. Yeah, I, got, uh, I have like 15 minutes. Okay, minutes, but. Uh, but let me ask you, like, as a closing question then, uh, is there like... So we're in March flying back to Vegas to record the show at the Barn Restaurant Expo uh, for the second year in a row. Good for you uh, guys. I'm moderating a panel, which will be not relatively new. I've done it, but not on this scale. Yeah. Um, what's the one thing that you've done where you're just like, like kind of like that weirdest moment where you're like, I can't believe I get to do this? I think it really was when we were filming with the Bruins – for the documentary. Yeah. Like we got special permission to go watch a practice and film with them. And, um, I didn't get to interview Charlie Coyle, but my team interviewed Charlie Coyle. We did Tim Sweeney, who was an Olympic, um, hockey player as well. And so I don't know. I I think just like that moment, I'm like, how are we here right now? Getting permission from the Bruins to film Charlie Coyle and Marshawn was there and all those players were there and we're filming with them yeah. for a documentary about a town. Like this to me is like mind boggling. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's just, it's again, like we talked about earlier, it's like when you talk to your friends about what you do and you know, oh, yeah, I'm on Nantucket today or I'm on the Bruins and it's just very matter of fact, not to be cocky, just right. that that's what I do. And like, that's the job you get to do. It's, it's just, it's kind of crazy that, that's the life that you get to live. I feel like mine's a little bit different because there are some times where people say it and you'd be like, I'm working. I don't have a drinking problem. I know I'm at breweries <laughs> yeah. like four nights a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I might have a drinking problem, but that's yeah. also separate. But I use it to make yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, but yeah, I find it. And the other thing is like meeting someone new and then, you know, just even if you're just kind of like in a casual party or whatever and they're like, oh, what do you do? And you're like, um, how do I explain it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. To me, that's one of those, you know, I've kind of come up with the line that I say, but even that, they're just going to look at you and go, I still don't. Yeah. Like, I still don't know what you can help me at all. Yeah. Yeah. But But it's pretty cool, too. I'm sure it's like with you, which you mentioned before, where people that you either look up to or people that you maybe just don't know or are even from Plymouth come to you and say, hey, like, I love the work that you're doing. Like, how do you even know yeah. who I am? Like, that is yeah. really cool when that happens. Or and like, I'm, I'm working on something. Can you give, a like, help? Yeah. And that's always like, why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I love when we're out and about and whether it's me or my team and someone's like, oh, my God, you're in that video from Hawk Visuals. Like, yeah, that's us. Like, it's a little bit of yeah. a little celebrity feel. Yeah. And it's not why we do it, but it's a really cool side effect. And especially when, you know, people that you look up to or, you know, you love their work, they know who you are, too, yeah. which is like, that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. The, the first time that ever happened, uh, it was the uh, parade day here, uh, and I was with my kids, and some guy just, like, interrupted our conversation. He's like, I don't mean to interrupt. He's like, but I just want to say I'm a big fan. I'm like, what now? He's like, I love what you're doing online. I love I'm a big fan. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Like, that's really cool. He's like, oh, I'm going to make it to one of your events, blah, blah, blah. And walked off, and I turned to my kids. I'm like, "You guys saw that, right? That that <laughs> happened." Yeah, yeah. And now it's kind of like my kids are kind of like over it. Yeah. It was and cool for a little bit. Now it's like, all right, like we were having uh, lunch uh, when it was outdoor dining, and we're sitting there, and my youngest looks at me. And she goes, 
are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? She's like, no one said hi to you in 10 minutes. I'm just making sure you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Is your ego okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. like, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 But um, where can people go to check out the documentary? Yeah. So or if you Hawk go to, Visuals in general. Yeah, so Hawk Visuals. You can check us out on social media everywhere. Just type in Hawk Visuals. You'll see us. Uh, documentary is on our website. So it's hawkvisualsmedia.com slash our story continues is the name of our documentary. Um, it's with with 400 so even if you go on their social media their website you'll see it there but uh yeah we're super proud of it it's about an hour and 15 minutes or so it's on youtube right now so you can watch it there um it's we're very proud of it so if you want to check it out it's on our website and uh, i think you'll you'll love it so it's so great i'm so happy that you guys have like grown immensely i mean you've how many employees do you have uh i have one, two, I have four full time, and then yeah. I have a couple just kind of like part time freelancer type people. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. So, congratulations, man. Thank and you, uh, sir. for our listeners, we'll catch you guys next week. And thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns, or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.